Hello everybody, and welcome back to another video. Now, I was not expecting to uh, be doing another video today. Um, I usually wait until, like, I, I'll do it one day and then I'll upload it the next day. Um, just, so I, this is just so there's something um, on my channel that I upload um, sometimes. So, yeah, but this is going to be coming out today. So, I'm, this would mean I did two videos in one day. So, uh, yeah. Because, my God, dude, this whole thing that's going on right now that with Zack Snyder and all this, like, um, fake Snyder um, bots, oh, my God. The moment I heard about this, I was like, I got to talk about this. Because right now, like, literally a lot of YouTubers are talking about this right now. So I was like, you know what? Why not? I'll jump in on the fun and talk about this. Um, but, man, I did not expect this. Oh, man, I only read a little bit of it, but oh my god, dude, this is getting really, like, interesting now. So, let's get into this. So, it says here on Rolling Stone um, that <laughs> fake accounts fueled the, the Snyder Cut online army, which, that's not it. Oh, no, 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 there's things in the article that I did see, that I did read ahead to, and man, it is some very interesting and very shocking stuff stuff i never ever thought i would hear about on an article uh, even about zack snyder of all people like holy crap so it says here that zack snyder was becoming increasingly agitated over the course of several weeks in the spring of 2020 the director repeatedly demanded that the names of two producers jeff johns and john berg be removed from the, his upcoming recut of justice league the DC superhero movie that had tanked back in 2017. His high-powered CAA agent began calling Warner Brothers daily to check on why the pair hadn't been excised from the list of credits. Simultaneously, Snyder's wife, Deborah, another producer on the film, um, started pressing an executive in the studio story department with the same directive. Snyder admits the couple asked the studio to intervene after a personal plea to Johnsonberg was ignored. On June 26th of 2020, the, uh, Zack Snyder had had enough. Had had enough. Fuck, I'm sorry. I, shoot, Jesus. Again, this, this, I, this, this is all just last minute shit, so I do apologize for stutter, for stuttering a little bit. Um, according to multiple sources familiar with the matter, Snyder confronted an, an executive in the studio's post-production department and issued a threat. Jeff and John are dragging their feet in, on taking their names off my cut. Now I will destroy them on social media. Jesus Christ. I, I, I remember hearing something similar about that. Um, a toxic uh, social media movement had already been building around the director since at least 2018, spiking with online cries for Warner Brothers to hashtag release the Snyder Cut of Justice League two years later. As Snyder's demands escalated behind the scenes, including for more money to finish his four-hour director's cut of the film for HBO Max and access to intellectual property, so did a flood of attacks aimed at Warner Brothers. Calls for boycotts, demands for some executives to be fired, even death threats against them. Fans went after anyone or anything deemed a danger to the so-called Snyderverse, including, I do know for a fact that um, a bunch of people, like YouTubers, um, people on Twitter, have been getting a lot of death threats from a lot of, like, hardcore Snyder fans. So, like, like that whole thing right there, I'm just not a fan of, and hey, that's what that's how fandoms are. Fandoms attract people like that, and that's definitely what I've noticed, definitely, and I, let me say that again, definitely what the Snyderverse fandom does. It attracts people that want to be toxic and say shit like that. They basically are the type of people where if you disagree with them on anything, you're considered like an anti, you're considered a, like, yeah, you're... You're basically considered, like, a fake fan, even, when it comes to, like, this type of stuff, which is fucking ridiculous. Dude, you're not a real fan of the- Shut the fuck up, dude. Come on. Like, really? Come on. Um, fans went after anyone or anything deemed dangerous to so-called snipers. Okay, I already read that. Including directors like Adam Wingard, whose Godzilla vs. Kong launched on HBO Max 13 days after Snyder Cut and stole some of its thunder. And movies like Wonder Woman 1984, on which Johns was a writer, the onslaught included cyber harassment so severe Warner Brothers Security Division got involved. 
A Warner Brothers Discovery spokesperson declined to comment as this matter predates the current leadership and new company. And as the mayhem built, many insiders questioned how organic the Snyderverse Legion really was. According to two reports commissioned by Warner Media and recently obtained by Rolling Stone, at least 13% of the accounts that took part in the conversation about the Snyder Cut were deemed fake, well above the 3-5% to that cyber experts say that typically see on any trending topic. And that's no surprise right there, because we, because like, I know for a fact that there are a bunch of, like, bots in the Snyderverse fandom. Like, and plus, it's even been confirmed multiple other times, too, that there have been, like, fake accounts. Like, like not even real people in the Snyderverse fandom. That is a fact, and that is absolutely true. Like, it's been proven before, so, I mean, like, that, that doesn't really surprise me, to be honest. So, I mean, it's like, now, the fact that they're talking about this now is kind of shocking. But at the same time, though, it's like, I wasn't, I'm not really surprised by that. Like... It, like, fake accounts in the Snyderverse fandom isn't really a, a shocker to me. Like, it, it's just not. Um, so anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, in public filings, Twitter has estimated that the percentage of daily active um, accounts on its platform that are false or spam is less than 5%. Um, so while Snyder had scores of authentic flesh and blood fans, those real stands were amplified by disproportionate number of bogus accounts. <laughs> They actually put in stands. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I am sorry. Oh my god. If people get offended by that, I am sorry for laughing at that. Um, <laughs> real stands. Because I'm sorry, but I'm going to come out and say this right now. There are people in this kind of fandom that are total stands. And that are like real like bigoted pieces of shit. <laughs> Like, there are. I'm sorry. Like, there are. There are people in the Snyderverse fandom that are real big pieces of shit that are actually stands. Like, <laughs> oh my god, the fact that they did that just cracks me up. Oh my god. <sighs> anyway, moving on. Um, two firms contacted by Rolling Stone that track the authenticity of social media campaigns, Q5ID and Graphica, also spotted inauthentic activity coming from the Snyderverse community. And yet another firm, Aletheia Group, found that the forsnydercut.com domain, which claims to have made the hashtag release Snyder Cut hashtag go viral in May of 2018, and became the landing hub for efforts to bring Snyder back to the helm of the DC Universe, was at least at one point registered to a person who also ran a now-defunct uh, ad agency, which promoted its ability to bring cheap, instant avatar traffic to your website. Rolling Stone spoke with more than 20 people involved with both the original Justice League and Snyder's Cut, most of whom believe that the director was working to manipulate the ongoing campaign. That right there is a shocker right there. If he was actually doing that to manipulate the ongoing campaign, oh my god, that, like, if this is actually true, if that whole thing is true right there, and there is more evidence about this coming out, dude, I will literally, like, be absolutely speechless, because this is, like, even when I saw that, too, like, earlier, before I even did this video, I was like, no fucking way did he actually, like, manipulate this. Like, I, I refuse to believe it, but if it's true, man, that is gonna be very shocking. Um, oh, fuck, fuck. Damn it, I lost where I was. Um, oh, here we go. Snyder claims that if anyone was pulling strings on the social media fervor, uh, it was Warner Brothers, trying to leverage my fan base to, bo to bolster subscribers to their new streaming service. But one source maintains Zack was like a Lex Luthor wrecking havoc. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Holy crap. For a time, uh, rival studios and digital marketing executives were intrigued by the Snyderverse fan mobilization, wondering how they too might better harness the power of social media. But soon many came to question what appeared to be suspect activity. Hashtags like hashtag release the Snyder Cut saturated social media beginning in late 2019 racking up hundreds of thousands of tweets a day to pressure Warner Brothers to release the director's version of the film. And when the studio finally released Snyder's new cut in March of 2021, hashtag restore the Snyderverse, a fledgling fan hashtag calling for Warner Brothers to greenlight more of Snyder's DC films, racked up more than a million tweets in one day. Just look at the drop. That hashtag was trending on a million tweets a day for when they wanted to release the Snyder cut, and it dropped down to 40,000 within days says one digital marketing executive, who claims the phenomenon became the talk of Hollywood. You don't see a drop like that organically. 
Instead, the executive says it appears to be a classic example of weaponizing a movement. Holy crap. Weaponizing a movement. Holy shit, dude. And I mean, in a way, that's kind of true. Because, I mean, like, look at the Snyderverse fandom. Like, like I brought up before. The, all the, the whole death threat thing. Like, a bunch of people have been getting death threats. YouTube, on Twitter, like, you name it. Like, people are getting death like that. that. That's just one example. There are multiple other examples, too. Like, even when you disagree with them on something, they're going to come after you and send out those death threats as well. Like, my God. Like, that's very true, man. Like, that, that shit is true. And I do agree with the whole weaponizing the movement thing. Like, they, sometimes they don't realize it, and sometimes they do it on purpose. That's the thing. That's what I'm trying to go out here. So, in mid-January 2021, three months before the Snyder Cut of Justice League was finally released, an Instagram account with the handle at Denyris Elist posted a gruesome image depicting the decaptive... Fuck. The de <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't talk that well, I'm sorry. The decapitated heads of John's DC Films president, Walter Hamada, and former Warner Brothers Pictures Group chairman, Toby Emmerich. Oh my god, that is, um, that's another thing they do. Um, people that they hate, they'll do shit like that. Which I totally disagree with, with that type of shit. That is, that is just disturbing, even reading that. The image rapidly circulated among the fandom with Snyderverse de devotees, even tagging social media accounts of some of the children of the trio. It was alarming posts like these that prompted Warner Media concerned about the safety of its employees to take the unusual step of quietly commissioning a series of reports from a third-party cybersecurity firm to analyze the trolling. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Okay, that I didn't know about. Holy shit. Um, the reports had taken on a mythic status within Warner Brothers. Some doubted they even existed, but a small group at the parent company did have access to them. The main report dated April of 2021 entitled Snyder Cut social media presence, offers a chilling glimpse inside the powerful movement. After researching online conversations about the Snyder Cut of the Justice League's release, specifically the hashtags Release the Snyder Cut and Restore the Snyderverse on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, the analysts detected an increase on negative activity created by both real and fake authors. The report concluded one identified community was made up of real and fake authors that spread negative content about Warner Media for not restoring the Snyderverse. Additionally, three main leaders were identified within the authors scanned on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. One leader on each platform, these leaders received the highest amount of engagement and have many followers, which gives them the ability to influence public opinion. Furthermore, the report stated many authors were spreading harmful content about then Warner Brothers chairman Ann Sarnoff, who had called the fan trolling reprehensible in an interview with Variety. With the majority of authors calling her a liar for the claim that there is no Snyder Cut of the movie and called for Warner Media to fire her, these authors also started using the hashtag Boycott Warner Brothers. Another internal report found an active sub-community that was attacking Johns. Rolling Stone asked three other cybersecurity and social media intelligence firms, including Q5ID, to crunch Snyderverse-related data from the months leading up to the Snyder Cut's 2021 release looking for indications of inauthentic social media activity. Such activity could take a number of forms, including attempts to manipulate discourse involving human-operated networks of inauthentic accounts, or use the use, of soft, the use of software to automate account posting and engagement activity, often referred to as bots. Q5ID Chief Information Officer and Chief Technology Officer Becky Wanta says her firm's anal analysis indicates there's no question that bots were involved. Wanta explains that there are certain patterns that bots give off that we saw here. They arrive at almost the same time in huge numbers, and many times the origin of thousands or even millions of messages can be traced to a single source or two. Sometimes they can be traced to unusual servers in remote countries, and their content will be precisely similar. That means a fandom amplified by fake accounts helped shake down a major studio at an ultimate cost to Warner Brothers of more than $100 million to re-release a movie that had already bombed years earlier. The campaign didn't end with the March 18, 2021 release of the Snyder Cut. The Wrap reported in May that bots may have factored into Snyder winning two fan-favorite awards at this year's Oscars. That I did remember hearing about, and that was pretty interesting. Like... To this day, I'm, I'm still, I still don't know if that was really the case or not, 
But if that is the case, man, 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 a lot of these fans that are doing that have to be put a stop to. Like, a lot of these fans just have to, like, get banned off the internet or some shit in order to, like, no longer do that shit. Um, and according to the social media firm Graphica, the pattern of a mostly organic social media fan frenzy augmented by a small number of inauthentic accounts is still playing out. We see clear signs of coordinated online activity from May and June this year. When multiple communities pushed hashtags promoting Zack Snyder and derating Warner Brothers, Avnish Chandra, a data analyst at Graphica, tells Rolling Stone, as examples, Graphica points to accounts that seem to exist only to barrage Twitter and the replies of Warner Media, social media accounts with constant pro-Snyder hashtags. Chandra downplays the effectiveness of that inauthentic activity, noting that many of those accounts are spammy and fail to cut through the noise. But he says it's clear there is some manipulation occurring. The bulk of this activity was made up of real and passionate users taking direction from influential figures in the pro-Snyder community, Chandra says. We regularly see these types of ad adversarial adversarial social media campaigns that are driven by real people coordinating online. When you kick the hornet's nest of a large, engaged, and confrontational fan community um, that can be just as, if not more, scary as facing down an army of fake accounts. Every superhero tale needs an origin story. And the groundwork for the Snyder siege had been laid well before 2020. While Snyder denies it, one source tells Rolling Stone the director hired a digital marketing firm to juice fan engagement back in 2016, when his $250 million film, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, was savaged by critics, earning a dismal 29% um, Rotten Tomatoes rating, and disappointed Warner Brothers brass at the box office as well as the DC fanbase. The movie took in $874 million worldwide. A DC standalone film like 2019's Joker, by comparison, cost $70 million and earned um, one point. <laughs> $74 billion worldwide. Nevertheless, the Snyder Army was uh, coalescing. On February 27th of 2017, Snyder showed his first cut of the much-anticipated Justice League, intended to be DC's answer to Marvel's all-star superhero juggernaut, the Avengers, which had earned um, $1.519 billion worldwide five years earlier and was directed by Joss Whedon. Yep, I remember those days when Joss Whedon directed that movie. Oh boy. Executives at the studio, um, headed up at the time uh, by former chief um, Kevin um, Sujihara, I'm sorry if I mispronounced his name, uh, felt the film had major issues, including that it was convoluted and still too long at more than two and a half hours. Uh, the movie was deemed a disaster and full-on failure by those in the room, and as a result, the studio pivoted and enlisted Whedon to come in to come on as a writer and consultant according to multiple knowledgeable sources. Which was a bad idea. Still to this day, I still don't know why they did that. Um, it was a humiliating, humiliating turn for Snyder, who had once been entrusted with creating the architecture for the DC Universe, and its slate of films including Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and the upcoming The Flash. Well, I mean, who knows what the hell's gonna happen with The Flash movie. Like, oh boy. Nine days later, Snyder presented another cut to a smaller group. It was still well over two hours. Whedon gave notes on that cut. Some say Snyder wasn't receptive. Then in mid-March of 2017, Snyder, a father of eight, endured an unthinkable tragedy when his 20-year-old daughter died. Yep, I still remember that. I remember that. That was sad. Uh, still, he continued working to cut down the film while the studio had Whedon operating on a separate track to lighten its dark, super serious tone. Um, on May 5th, 2017, Snyder screened of his final version of Justice League on the Burbank lot for all the studio's department heads. It clocked in at two hours and 18 minutes. One source familiar with that cut called it unwatchable and joyless. Uh, meanwhile, Whedon, the creator of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, was prepping to direct reshoots in the summer so that the film could make its November 2017 release date. None of the backstage drama surrounding Whedon's hiring had surfaced in the press at the time. Two and a half weeks later, on May 20, 22, 2017, Snyder announced the news of his daughter's death and his exit from Justice League. His wife, Deborah, also said she was taking a break to focus on healing. In the last two, month, I've, the last two months, I've come to the realization I've decided to take a step back from the movie to be with my family, be with my kids who really need me, Zack Snyder told The Hollywood Reporter. They are all having a hard time. I'm having a hard time. Uh, and then here we go. Warner Brothers uh, released Justice League. Oh, boy. With its star-laden cast of Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, and Gal Gadot on November 17th, 2017, and it was quickly proclaimed a disaster. 
Critics bristled at the uh, schizophrenic result, a mashup of Snyder's brooding, violent R-rated version poking through Whedon's campy PG-13 incarnation. The film's $658 million global haul was an embarrassment given its $300 million budget. By contrast, the DC standalone uh, Wonder Woman made $165 million more than Justice League, but with half the budget that that same year. Though Snyder had created the architecture for the entire DC universe, he is responsible for casting Ben Affleck as Batman, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, Ezra Miller as Flash, Jason Momoa as Aquaman, Ray Fisher as Cyborg, and Ever Heard as Mira, and was a producer on various standalone and spin-off films like 2016's Suicide Squad. He was now on the outside. The studio was looking to take the universe in a different direction and was making plans to replace Affleck and Cavill, which I, which I still disagree with, by the way. Um, around this time, sources say Snyder sent one of his editors to the studio to retrieve hard drives that contained materials for Justice League. Snyder was asked to return them, considering they were studio property. He balked. Snyder says he was contractually entitled to files connected with the film, that the materials were for my personal use, and that he was not asked to return them at the time. Security was notified, sources say, but no action was taken. No one expected Snyder to begin tinkering with an alternate cut of the film. But a new force was rising, the Snyderverse Army, for SnyderCut.com. One of the loudest and most influential voices in online Snyder fandom made its debut in late December of 2017. And according to both the site and the main report commissioned by Warner Media, played an influential role in making the Twitter hashtag, hashtag release SnyderCut, go viral. That is interesting. That is interesting. It's unclear who precisely is behind the site. Four participants are listed there as its developers, including a self-identified fan and site founder who purports to be from China named Fiona Zhang. The site was originally registered using a privacy service in December of 2017, but web registration records showed that during a brief lapse in the privacy protection from mid-March to mid-October of 2021, a digital marketing consultant named Xavier Lanis, I'm sorry if I, min if I mispronounced that, that last name as well, I'm sorry, was listed as the registrant of ForSnyderCut.com. The social media ana analy analytics firm Aletheia tells Rolling Stone that it is highly unlikely that ownership changed hands before or after that period. Um, a LinkedIn account for um, Lanes, who is not mentioned on ForSnyderCut.com, identifies him as the CEO of a Los Angeles-based digital ad firm called My Ad uh, My Agency. Dot. Oh, period. I'm sorry. Um, the website myadgency.com is no longer active, but an archived version of the site touted such services as bringing cheap, instant avatar traffic to your website. The agency boasted, We use the latest technology concentrated in the palm of your customers' hands to grow your business beyond your wildest dreams. Snyder denies knowing or ever hiring Lanis. Lanis did not respond to a, to a request for comment. Zhang, meanwhile, despite profilic, um, prolific um, tweeting about Snyder from 2016 up until the day of the Snyder Cut's release in 2021, has posted just twice since then. A query to Zhang went unanswered. Over the two years following Justice League's disappointing bow, Warner Brothers faced changes in June 2018. AT&T closed an $85 billion deal to acquire the Time Warner Media Empire, whose sprawling assets included CNN and HBO. The following year, um, Suchi Tahari, um, and I, I know I fucked that name up. I am so sorry. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to get through this article because this is a long ass article, man. Holy crap! Um, uh, resigned following a Hollywood Reporter expose about his apparent efforts to secure roles for an aspiring actress with whom he had a sexual relationship. Sarnoff replaced him. All the while, the Snyder fandom continued to call for the studio to greenlight a Snyder version of Justice League launching a change.org petition and mobilizing the hashtag, hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Executives who didn't fall in line faced a social media beating. Former DC Entertainment president uh, Diane Nelson deleted her Twitter account in September 2018 after Snyderverse adherents targeted her for merely praising Todd Phillips' Joker, a film that exists outside the Snyder canon. Man, 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 man. That I didn't know about. Holy crap. That is a... Uh... That is very, 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 very shocking. All right, so this art, this is a very long article. I didn't know the article was going to be this long. Holy shit. Um, 
I'm gonna I hear I'm gonna keep I'm just I'm just gonna like get through this as quick as I can. I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna skip a few paragraphs because this is way too long, dude. The fandom, which has been dubbed toxic by such outlets as um, Vanity Fair and Vox, with the latter noting it, has far more in common with abusive right wing campaigns like a Gamergate than with most of mainstream geek culture. Continue to push. And Snyder began negotiations with Warner Brothers on a Justice League redo in January of 2020. The plan was to release his cut on the in-development HBO Max streaming platform. Sources say the director insisted that no new footage would be needed. After Snyder screened the 214-minute version at his home right before the March 2020 COVID lockdown, HBO Max executive Bob Greenblatt uh, greenlit the project, a move signed off on by new Warner Media CEO Jason Kilar. The company officially announced the film on May 20th of 2020, with Greenblatt noting, Since I got here 14 months ago, the chant to hashtag release Snyder Cut has been a daily drumbeat in our offices and inboxes. Well, the fans have asked, and we are thrilled to finally deliver. Silicon Valley transplant Kilar had raised eyebrows internally when he initially floated the uncon unconventional idea of announcing Snyder Cut from his own Twitter account and having the director flown to Dallas to address the AT&T board. Some became even more concerned when the CEO, who was publicly bantering with Snyder on Twitter, was told that Snyder was in possession of studio property, and they say he simply shrugged it off. Kilar says he never had the re remote test thought to fly Snyder to Texas to address the board and says he would never shrug off someone having studio property. Man. Um, crap, okay. Yeah, th th this is a long article, man. Holy crap. I'm gonna, I gotta really get it, get it up here. Um, regardless of whether there was behind-the-scenes manipulation in the Snyderverse for Wanta, whose firm spots and an, an, an analyze, analyzes inauthentic online activity, the phenomenon offers a blueprint on how to weaponize a fan base. That's my concern with the manipulation. That's what's happening inside these movements relative to bots. You can drive the court of public opinion, says Wanta. It needs to be dealt with because it's going to get worse before it gets better. And sadly, this person is right. Like, if this whole thing gets worse, if the Snyder fan does keep doing this, but it gets to the point where they show up at someone's front door, then, yeah, something's got to get done immediately. Like, something's, something's got to get done about this whole online harassing thing that, they're, that the Snyder movement's doing. But if it gets to the point where they're walking up to your front door, banging on your door, like ready to beat you up or kill you or something like that, then it's like, yeah, something really has to be done by then. So yeah, man. Um, I'm gonna put a link to this article in the description. Um, because th man, this is a long article, dude. Like there are things I missed out on that I purposely missed out on because this is a very long ass article, man. So I'll be putting a link to that in the description down below. But, um, but yeah, man, um, post your comments down below, though. Let me know what you guys think of this whole thing. Do you think Zack Snyder really did manipulate his entire, like, fandom and purposefully weaponized it? Or do you think that this whole thing wasn't his fault? Let me know. And, um, also, if you guys, um, did enjoy this video, make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe. And if you guys know anyone that's a fan of, um, um, DC, um, or a fan of Zack Snyder specifically, you should send this video over to them because they might have, they might have a good time watching this. And also, come follow me over on Twitch and Discord. I'll be putting the links to those in the description down below. So yeah, um, until then though, everybody, I will see you all later, and goodbye!